Heavy breathing and the sound of muffled footsteps is all you can hear in a damp cave entrance as you and your hunting party slowly creep forward following the head hunter's flickering torchlight with nothing more than a spear. You all have torches, however, his torch is the only one lit as you want the element of surprise for the beast that awaits. The clan has just survived a harsh long winter, the food supply at home has run out, and the clan desperately needs fresh fatty meat to replenish the body's natural fat storage. The hunt you are partaking in is part of the yearly ritual, the ritual of the Great Cave Bear Hunt. Hey everyone, welcome to my long-awaited part 2 of my mini-series, Hypothetical Neanderthal Rituals. In this week's episode, I will be covering, although not very well, the possibility of Neanderthal cave bear, or really just bear worship. Obviously, going back to the time of the Neanderthals, there is a lot of unknowns. So, a lot of what I will be saying, and the evidence I will provide, will be pure speculation. However, I will mainly be talking about the possibility of ritual hunting, of a slumbering cave bear just as the last frost melts and the dawn of spring has uh, come upon us. So come along with me and enjoy the rest of the video. Evidence for Neanderthals using cave bear bones or other bear bones is extremely rare. However, the fact that we have any evidence at all suggests that it is happening more commonly than one would think. A site in Scaldini Cave, Belgium, has turned up 26 bone retouchers from various animals, seven of which were made from cave bear bones. Slivers of flint and other stone have been found in microscopic grooves on the bone retouchers, as well as impact marks, scrape marks, and so on, that can only be made when the bone is fresh. To me, this suggests that the Neanderthals who hunted, or maybe accidentally encountered these massive bears, used its bones to retouch the tools as they were skinning and processing the carcass. To me, the fact that the bare bones were found in a cave tells me that the Neanderthals who killed this massive beast either ambushed the bear as he was hibernating, or they killed him while he was returning to the cave for hibernation. However, as the bear is in its best shape before hibernation, and its worst right after, I can imagine the smart move would be to attack the bear right as they were waking up. For one, this gives you access to much needed fat after the long winter. It also gives you access to fatty meats, a warm and thick cave bear hide, claws, and a trophy. A cave bear skull if the brain was not eaten. This brings me to my next point. Cave bear skulls and possible archaeological evidence for Paleolithic bear worship slash ritual practices. Dragon's Cave is a site that is heavily debated by many scientists. Excavated between 1917 and 1921, Dr. Emil Bachelor uncovered a series of interesting finds. Within the Cain Deborahs and Rock Rubble, there were plenty of cave bear bones, which is not uncommon. However, within two of the chambers, there were stone walls about 15 inches in height. These walls were all consistent, whereas in other stone structures associated with Neanderthals, they are usually just stone circles that might have been windbreaks or structures for holding up tent pegs. Anyways, where these stone walls were present, cave bear long bones and skulls were common, whereas they were less common along the cave walls without stone structures. So, what could this have been? Many academics tend to say it's just the natural way the bones were deposited. However, I don't fully agree with this, as one might expect. If the Neanderthals were disposing these bones, it could have been multiple things. It could have been a ritual, a way to dispose the bones after the bears were killed, or many other things. These wall structures with the bear skulls and bones were not the only weird thing discovered. Many, six to be exact, were dry masonry chests full of bear bones. Of one of these cysts in particular was apparently the most incredible find stacked about three to four feet high with a large slab, limestone slab placed on the top, was a box full of skulls of cave bear all facing the same direction and placed in an organized manner. This is the most famous find in Dragon's Cave. 
Unfortunately, the workers who originally found it destroyed the finding before it could be photographed, which makes the finding even harder to believe. One of the finds at Dragon's Cave even gave Jean M. L. U. inspiration for one of the clan rituals in Clan of the Cave Bear. This ritual is a sort of banishment ritual, but it's not important to this video. The ritual starts with a, bear, a cave bear thigh bone being twisted into the cheekbone of the massive uh, cave bear skull. Much like the actual find at Dragon's Cave, this is how it was done, as the thigh bone will not fit into the cheekbone without a twisting motion, making this a very unlikely natural occurrence. Like many finds from Dragon's Cave, a lot of the physical evidence has been lost to time of the mishandling of artifacts, so we may never know until more evidence is found. Many hunter-gatherer societies today and past always had some form of animal worship. Some Native American tribes have worship ceremonies for the salmon run, and many have totems erected of animals of the hunt. Deer dances of fertility, reindeer sacrifices are made by the Laps, and Paleo-Siberian tribes have a Lord of the Reindeer, whose shaman can take the form of a reindeer. Plains Indians have bison worship, and many hunter-gatherer societies the bear is often seen as the spirit of the soul of all humans. So let me ask you this, did Middle Paleolithic Neanderthals worship the cave bear? This has been part two of my mini-series, Possible Neanderthal Rituals. Thank you for watching, and I'm sorry it took so long. Um, I know a lot of you have been waiting a long time for this. Uh, probably two months at this point. Um, I just, in the middle of writing the script and all that, I got really bored of it. And, uh, like, work got in the way and all that. Because it is the summertime, and I've been doing a lot of fishing. Um, and I've been working on a lot of projects, which I will have updates soon. I've also started another series, which I am enjoying a little more than this, because there's a little less reading, of uh, Neanderthal Skulls. I've got nine... 3D printed Neanderthal skulls, and I'll have a tenth on the way, and I want to make videos on each one of them, because not many people know the individual skulls too well. My, the first episode on that was the Feldhofer one, or the Neanderthal one. I'll have a link down for that if you want to go see it, and this might be a bi-monthly thing, the, the possible ritual practices. It seems to be just enough time for me to finish it all. Uh, I hope you learned something new. Please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out the description for extra content. Uh, share this with all your friends. And uh, feel free to join my Facebook group, Neanderthals in the Middle Paleolithic. It's got nearly 10,000 people in it. Great community. I post all the time on there. See you guys.